Hi, welcome to Stand Here For. I'm your host, Chikudu. Remember, we're running a series on why does our miracles delay? How come those things we believe God for, those things we trust God for, appear to be delaying? And I'm trying my own opinion based on some little revelation I've gotten from God's word to help you, to bolster you, and to prop you up so you won't give up on that thing you've trusted God for. So you won't give up on those your hopes until you receive them. Join me for the fourth episode on the other side. Hi, welcome back. I'm your host again, Chikudum. So today, we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14 that says, Stand therefore, having your leons guard about with truth. So we are going to look at that word, truth. The word truth means the highest form of reality. The word truth there is God's word, His promises. And the Bible says that, that His word is the truth. The word God has spoken over you is the truth that makes it more definite. There is no other truth that surpasses God's words. My, God's words are so true that God himself said he has set his words, his word above his name. That is how real God's words are. So when you take God's word, his promises, you brood over them and you believe them more than you believe the present and current circumstances, the present facts that you are faced with, and you make God's word your reality, before you know it, the present facts and circumstances around you will rise up and match up with God's word. That is how it works. The Bible says there in Paul's writing to the church in Ephesus that for them to be able to stand against the evil one, who is not flesh and blood, but rather comes attacking you through wiles, which I've said in previous episodes are strategies. That tells me something. The battle you're actually faced with is in your mind. So Satan comes with wild strategies to combat your mind, to bombard your mind from believing what God's word has said. So he paints a picture that your present reality and fact, the trouble you're going through, is more real than what God said you are, or what God said you have, or who you are in Christ. So that is what this battle is all about, is the battle of the mind. So Paul, starting off in the list of how to withstand the enemy, started with truth. To tell you that every other revelation, every other thing we are going to mention throughout this series, you must catch a revelation of it. You must know the truth about it, not just the head knowledge. The word translated Leon from the Greek writing of that scripture is talking about your waist and it has two meanings. The physical waist that we know of and the internal waist. The physical waist, of course, you know that's why you wear your belt. But there's something behind it, especially for a man. Remember the soldier, which is what is used as you know a metaphor in this entire context, is actually talking about the Roman soldier. That's why some of my background, that's why the background I have. I uh, show soldiers, both modern soldiers and Roman soldiers, for you to have a picture of what I'm trying to paint to you. They, they, they wear this belt that holds up the entire um, gear in the armory. The belt holds it up together. That is why catching a revelation of the other principles I'm going to show you from this scripture must, must, and is necessary. The truth of each component is what you need to be able to stand against the enemy. Now, the word leons transcribed from or translated into English from the Greek text means your waist area, the outer one and the inner one. And when you look at strong, strong made a particular note about the inner inner one. See, the Jews, when they refer to leons, they're actually talking about the source of creation. That is why behind your waist internally for a man, remember, I think with a soldier, 
for a man is where the chambers of reproduction is. That is where the man's prostrate and etc. is. That is the chamber of reproduction. And it has deep meaning when it comes to this verse. And if that is a physical source of life, I also believe this is in my own opinion. And I'm going to show you from the scriptures why I believe what I'm about to tell you is the truth. And I welcome your objections. Leave it as a comment and we'll have a discuss on it. I also believe that also around this area, which the Bible calls your belly, around your waist area, and the Bible refers to that place too as your belly, is also where the real you resides. That's your human spirit. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever had this sudden sharp bout or sharp onslaught of fear? Or fear, maybe something dangerous is happening around you, maybe a robbery attack, accident, or whatever, and fear just hits you sharply. For most of you, I'm sure you've had that. What happened to your body physically? Apart from ad adrenaline running through your system, apart from your voice sounding shaky and all that, there's something I'm sure most of you have felt. I have felt it, now I have felt it. I usually feel stomach upset. All of a sudden, I feel uncomfortable all around my tummy region. I just feel uncomfortable until that fearful sensation dissipates or whatever that is causing fear leaves. I will feel upset in my tummy. And I'd like you to confirm if you have felt that way. Leave a comment. And that tells me something. And I tell people that I teach that when fear comes like that and it hits your belly region, your loins and all that, it is the dangerous kind of fear. Why? That fear is attacking your human spirit. See, you can have fear in your mind, like doubt and all that. The fear in your mind can do nothing much apart from opening you up to this what I'm talking about. But the fear in your mind can really assassinate your faith. But that one that hits you in the tummy is the dangerous one. That is when you know that the spirit of fear is somewhere around you. And the spirit of fear is Satan's protocol officer. You know, for every VIP, before he hits an occasion or an event, they send a protocol officer ahead of time. Satan sends fear. If you buy into his fear, then you've licensed him to attack you. That's how dangerous fear is. So let me go on. This video has to be very short. So why am I saying this? I believe that your human spirit is there. Like I said, I'm open to objection so we can discuss it. Why? The Bible talks so much about the belly relating it to the human spirit. I'll just show the scriptures underneath. I won't be able to read all of them. But one that is worth noting, where the Bible says in Proverbs 20 verse 27, where it said that the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord and it searcheth all the parts of his belly. Another one I can give you is where the Bible says, Jesus, Jesus speaking in John chapter 7, talking about the Holy Spirit. And you know the Holy Spirit, when you go born again, entered your human spirit and recreated it. The seat, the throne of the Holy Spirit in every believer's life is the human spirit. Now see what Jesus said in John 7 verse 38. He said, see, the out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. The Bible says after that, that Jesus talking there was talking about the Holy Spirit. Where will the Holy Spirit come out from you? Is from your belly. I can show you loads of other scriptures. Like I said, I'll scroll a couple of them underneath that supports that theory. And this same Holy Spirit that lives in your human spirit is also the spirit of truth. That is why you need to lace your human spirit and your soul because they are together with revelation knowledge. Because in the seat of your mind is where your willpower is. It is where, it is where is the chamber of choice. It is where you choose to do this or to do that. And whenever you believe God for a miracle, one of the greatest choices you need to make is the choice of being resilient, of being dogged. That I will not give up spirit. I'm going to hold on to God till he blesses me. It is that spirit that is required. Though present fact might try to sway you from your determination and your doggedness. But when your human spirit and soul has been laced with truth and you know that you know that your present facts are temporal because there is a superior law of the spirit 
of life in Christ Jesus that you've gotten from the promises of God, guess what? Your miracles will be inevitable. See you at the next one. Father, I pray for those that have watched this video and I join my faith with them and I believe that they will not give up. They will hold on like Jacob held on to you and they will receive all their miracles. It will happen speedily. I release angels to go now and bring it to them. In the name of Jesus. Amen. See you at the next one. The next one is going to be interesting. We're going to talk about the breastplate of righteousness. Bye.